So I've been an Apple fanboy for a really long time, all the way back to the ripe age of 15 when I got my very first Mac, an iBook G3. Now sure, I picked this computer up out of the trash and it was ridiculously slow considering it only had a 300 megahertz power PC processor, 256 megabytes of RAM, and no integrated Wi-Fi. But regardless of all of its shortcomings, it was my first and possibly my very favorite Mac. It also happened to be the very first Macintosh computer that I used that wasn't the gaming one at my local public library. That's right, back then, Mac computers were actually pretty good at gaming. And right out of high school, I decided to keep on drinking that apple juice and I went on to actually work at Apple as a Macintosh technician or a Mac genius as the actual job title is called. And it's all just been history from there. Now fast forward to more recent times and I am still such an Apple fan that even when I decided to start this YouTube channel, I decided to invest my time and money into learning Apple's Final Cut Pro as opposed to learning the vastly more superior Adobe Premiere Pro. Now that decision that I made to get married to Apple's ecosystem and Apple's Final Cut Pro over the last couple of years has proven itself to be extremely detrimental, not only to my pockets, but also to my creativity. So that's why in today's video, I'm gonna be making the switch. So Final Cut's been working just fine for me these last couple of years. So why have I decided to make the switch now? Well, there's actually a couple of reasons. So reason number one is in an effort to increase the production quality here on the channel, I've decided to pick up a new camera in particular the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So what's so special about this one camera that's convincing me to switch over editing applications as well as operating systems? Well, that's gonna be its ability to shoot in something called RAW, or as Blackmagic calls it, B-RAW. Recording videos in RAW formats give you a ton of flexibility in post, allowing you to modify things such as your white balance or your ISO. But wait, Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve Studio both work in Mac OS. So what's up with the entire operating system change? Well, that gets us into reason number two and reason number three. Reason number two is gonna be the recently added support for NVIDIA and Vic encoding in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I'm not gonna to get too much into it in this video, but basically the gist of it is your final render time should be somewhere in the neighborhood of around four times faster than it was prior to the update. Now, the reason why this warrants an operating system change is at the time of recording this video, Apple and NVIDIA are not the best of friends. So unfortunately, NVIDIA graphics cards are not supported in Mac OS. And reason number three is, Apple computers are just really damn expensive. So recently I upgraded my editing workstation to dual 4K monitors. I also added two capture cards for doing live streams. And my six inch MacBook Pro is pretty powerful and it can handle all these things, but it sounds like a jet engine while doing it. Now, of course, the simple solution to all of this would be to run out and pick up one of those whisper quiet, brand new shiny Mac Pros. But I figured it'd be much more cost effective to build my own PC as well as I think I'd get a lot more bang for the buck. And also the aforementioned point of NVIDIA cards only working in Windows operating systems. And with all these reasons combined, let me show up to you guys my brand new editing station and let's compare it to my six inch MacBook Pro and see which one is faster at video editing, rendering, and encoding. All right, so here we are with my new editing station and inside this thing is pretty powerful. So it's powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X processor that is a 16 core 32 thread part. The motherboard is an ASRock X570M MATX motherboard, which is enough for me to actually have a graphics card as well as a capture card inside. It also has 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RGB memory, and it has a one terabyte NVMe SSD PCI Express 4.0, which is the Corsair M600. And of course, we can't forget about that graphics card, which is an MSI Gaming X RTX 2060 Super. And in this corner, we have my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has an eight core Intel processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, an AMD Radeon Pro 5500M eight gigabyte model, and a one terabyte SSD. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is check out a synthetic benchmark. This is just gonna give us a baseline score so we can see where our 16 inch MacBook Pro and my new editing station kind of line up against each other. Now the benchmark that we're actually gonna be running is by a company called Puget Systems. They are a systems integrator and they actually make a really awesome benchmark program called the Puget Systems Premiere Pro Benchmark. I'll leave it linked down in the video description below in case you guys wanna check out the benchmark and see where your computer stacks up against my new editing system. So in the Puget System, System's Premiere Pro benchmark, our 16 inch MacBook Pro scored around 352, while our brand new editing station scored 724. That's more than double the score. But does having double the score actually equal double the performance? Well, we'll find out a little bit later in this video. For now, let's take a look at some of the other benchmarks that I ran and see how they perform. 
All right, so for the next couple of benchmarks, I ended up creating my own benchmarking projects. So one is a two minute and 24 second project that was shot on my Sony a7 Mark III and HI264. Another is a six minute and 24 second project that was shot on my Fujifilm X-T4 and HI265. And then finally, a five minute project that was shot on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in B-RAW. Now when it comes to the timeline scrubbing test, there's really not much to see here. As expected, both computers are more than capable of powering through both HI264 HI-265, and even the B-RAW footage, even after I've added a number of adjustment layers and a bunch of color corrections and transitions, there's no problem for both of these machines. Now when it comes to exporting and rendering times, this is where things get, well, pretty predictable. As expected, my new editing station is completely crushing it against my 16-inch MacBook Pro. Even when it comes to CPU and software rendering times, it's just much, much faster. But when you throw that NVIDIA NVIG encoding into the equation versus the uh, hardware encoding that's happening on my 6-inch MacBook Pro. As you guys can see from the numbers, the new system is just way, way faster. All right, so by the looks of it, I've successfully built a machine that's faster than my 16-inch MacBook Pro, that's capable of processing Blackmagic RAW, and all of this at a fraction of the cost, right? Well, maybe not necessarily. Let's take a look at some of that math. All right, so I've put together my complete system as configured in PC Part Picker, and the price tag comes in at around 2217. Now this isn't taking into consideration some of the inflation due to the pandemic. Uh, some of these components are a little bit higher than what I paid. Uh, definitely the motherboard, that's about $100 cheaper when I got it before the pandemic. And then also when it comes to the 2060 Super, I definitely paid considerably less uh, because I got it open box from Micro Center. So I'm gonna round this number down to around $2,000. And then I've gone ahead and configured my 6-inch MacBook Pro as I've ordered it on Apple.com, and we can see that that comes in at around $3,500, so there's about a $1,500 difference. But then when you tack on the monthly cost of an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, let's say for about three years, because that's how long I typically keep a computer, the numbers start to become not so different. Maybe I should have got that Mac Pro after all. No, but overall, I think I'm pretty happy that I made the switch. It's really nice to have a super powerful workstation that could pretty much take anything that I throw at it. It's also really great to be able to use new technology and new software. In fact, this video that you're watching here is the very first video that I've uploaded to this channel that hasn't been edited and exported in Final Cut Pro. I think I'll continue this switch experiment for the next 30 days or so, and I'll try to make a follow-up video to let you guys know how it went. But until then, that is going to wrap this video up. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button, and if it's your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. Once again, Again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.